Okay, so I know in the last video we talked about Jonathan Huberto after opening that video by saying that all the big conversations we have had that have highlighted ideas spread from the trade that Huberto was involved in have been focusing on Matthew Kachuk. Well, here's another Kachuk video because, hey, hey, what do you say? There are some more insider pieces of information that have been getting leaked that are making the rounds on social media and boasting up bigger talks, bigger discussions, and bigger hypotheticals for the entire Matthew Kachuk trade saga. Yesterday, we talked about the idea of the New Jersey Devils and how they actually were pursuing Kachuk for, in the words of Renault Lavoie, Weeks and weeks extends past the start of free agency, which means that the Devils, at one point in time, were going after both Kachuk and Gaudreau in the same span of hours there. And eventually, you know, Gaudreau signed with Columbus, so New Jersey missed out on him, and Kachuk was traded over to Florida, so they missed out on him as well, but... Aside from New Jersey, there have indeed been some other teams that were linked to the Matthew Kachuk Calgary Flames trade talks. Now, obviously, there was that list that was published a few days ago talking about the Dallas Stars, the Vegas Golden Knights, the Florida Panthers, the Nashville Predators, as well as the St. Louis Blues. We actually had the Predators come out there and say publicly to the media that no, we were not on Matthew Kachuk's list. So unfortunately, the sources that went out there and said Nashville were kind of bogus. But when it comes to the other teams that we had been seeing pop up lately after the trade talks as well, like New Jersey from Renault Lavoie, we did have that Frank Sarah Vailey tweet that we also talked about in yesterday's video too. Sarah Vailey said this in a tweet the other day. Sources say that one of the teams that was also in deep trade talks on Kachuk was the Canes. We also believe the St. Louis Blues were deep in the mix as well, but you can understand with another 100-point player in the mix why the Cats had the upper hand. Well, give it a few days, and we have ourselves an article from Jeremy Rutherford talking about the very same St. Louis Blues squad that was reportedly involved in these Kachuk talks. Here's the article in question, Matthew Kachuk on his hometown St. Louis Blues team. Could I have pictured myself there? Yes. The article will be linked in the description if you want to go ahead and read it, but of course, because Jeremy Rutherford is a St. Louis-based athletic reporter, this article kind of goes over the Kachuk discussion and it highlights it from a very St. Louis-centered point of view. And there is one quote that pops out amongst the rest when it comes to where this conversation lies with Kachuk and St. Louis. Here's the quote in question. It was posted onto Twitter by NHL News. Rutherford said this. One source said that the St. Louis Blues proposal for Matthew Kachuk included Vladimir Tarasenko, Marco Scandella, and a high draft pick. The Flames' interest in Tarasenko, or lack thereof, was an issue, though. As for the Carolina Hurricanes, a source said they put together a package that included Martin Netshosh, and that's kind of all that's said about the Hurricanes in that respect. But because, you know, Netshosh is a player, he's the guy that he is, and you have Tarasenko and Kachuk and Huberto also in this conversation, in my opinion, personally. And this is no disrespect to Martin Netshosh. I don't think that Netshosh is in that same territory of caliber of talent as a Kachuk or a Huberto is. Could he get there? Maybe, but not right now. So we're just going to kind of disregard the Carolina thing for now and just only focus on St. Louis, Vladimir Tarasenko, Marco Scandella, a high pick, as well as the Calgary Flames saying no to that type of package. Now, when I initially saw this video not video, this tweet, I had to do a little bit of a double take because I saw that and I was like, wait a minute, Vladimir Tarasenko, does that guy not have a no trade clause? And then if you go over to his contract, you take a look at how much money the 29 or excuse me, 30 year old right wing sniper is getting $7.5 million a season. He expires in 2022, 2023, and he does have that no trade. Sure, Tarasenko was a fantastic player at the NHL level last year, 82 points, 75 games played, but it was always kind of my perception here that Tarasenko wasn't really the type of player that would have been able to just get traded anywhere because he had that protection. But then I did some digging, and I searched back into our previous catalog of videos here on the LEGO Rock 99 channel of videos we've made about Tarasenko, and I saw this one pop up here. 
July 8th, 2021, Vladimir Tarasenko requests a trade. In this video, the Calgary Flames logo is visible in the thumbnail. And if you go over to the article that we linked, the fourth period's trade watch list of the summer, I believe it was like July version 2021, whatever it was, you can see that Tarasenko's name was indeed linked to Calgary in that time frame. Now, that piece of information is something that I just probably completely forgot about. So, when I saw this tweet pop up saying that the Calgary Flames had an offer of Tarasenko on their doorstep, I was like, wait, that's fishy. But at the end of the day, you take a look at what the inevitable trade package was, you compare Tarasenko, Marco Scandella, and a high pick to Jonathan Huberto, Mackenzie Wieger, Cole Schwint, and a first, and you could totally understand that, yeah, okay, the Calgary Flames, let alone the interest or disinterest they have in Tarasenko, this is a team that absolutely took a King of the Jungle lion-sized bite out of the Florida Panthers with a trade package that they had that was so superior than what this St. Louis Blues offer had in store, too. Now, we said this yesterday, but it's very hard to compete with a package that includes Jonathan Huberdo, 115 points in 80 games this past season. He had the same amount of points as Johnny Gaudreau in two fewer games. Sure, he's expiring next year, but Tarasenko is too. And Huberdo does not have any trade protection. He's making a smaller amount of money because, hey, there's that Florida state tax right there that's non-existent. And he is absolutely one of the best playmakers in the entire National Hockey League. Sure, Tarasenko is a sniper through and through. He was over a point per game, but 82 points in 70-something games is not 115 points in 80 games. That's it, plain and simple, move on. Marco Scandella comparative to Mackenzie Weaker is an interesting one because I really do like Scandella. I was very appreciative of his service that he had in Montreal, but at the end of the day, you have yourselves Mackenzie Weger, who is a very underrated, very mobile, very all-round defenseman who can produce points as well, who's also signed to a less than $3 million contract until the end of this season as well. He is so good, and he's going to help out a Calgary Flames team that just lost out on Erica Branson in a much bigger way than Marco Scandella would. Then if you compare the St. Louis first versus the Florida Panthers first, as well as Cole Schwint, the prospect Cole Schwint makes things a lot easier to stomach, plus the fact that if you're projecting the Panthers to take a step back next year, which you very well could believe they would because, hey, you don't have Huberto and Uyghur anymore, you're replacing them with one Matthew Kachuk, who is indeed only one player, there is a chance that this team steps back and maybe ends up losing out a little bit sooner in the postseason, leading to a higher draft pick. I mean, the 2023 draft is pretty stacked in general, so we'll see where exactly everything lies there. But at the end of the day, the Flames and Brad Trilliving, I mean, they did their best, and they got a heck of a lot out of Florida. It's just really interesting to me, though, noting how this individual part of the conversation was highlighted the way that it was. Their disinterest or their lack of interest in Tarasenko was a contributing factor as to why St. Louis could not get this done. Maybe St. Louis was going out there and saying, hey, we know your guy wants to come here. We know Kachuk wants to play for us. So here's a package. It's take it or leave it. Tarasenko, Scandella first. If you don't like it, then okay. But this is a team in St. Louis here that your guy really wants to play on. So you'd be really doing your guy a solid if you sent him over here. And I mean, come on. Tarasenko is like one of the most valuable St. Louis Blues when it comes to offensive ability right now anyway. So it's not really like the Blues could have gone out there and one-upped the Florida Panthers package in general unless they traded away some other players like Kairu or whatever. We saw the entire Kairu conversation. In fact, heck, if it was Kairu and Tarasenko and Scandella and a first, I think that competes a little bit more maybe even a tad over what the Florida Panthers had, but at the same time, Huberto is so, so good that it's tough to go out there and deny any trade that has that type of a talent attached to it. So, talk to the comments on your thoughts about Jeremy Rutherford and the rejected St. Louis Blues Tarasenko Kachuk trade that was apparently on the table. Talk to the comments on your thoughts if you're Calgary. Do you think they made the right move? I think most people would unanimously agree that they did, but you can let me know your comments, any thoughts, extenuating ideas that 
percolate from this entire discussion over here. Kachuk, Tarasenko, do you think Tarasenko could have been a good flame? Are you intrigued as to how they were not interested in Vlad? I very much am, but of course we don't have any other details as to why that would have been the case. Either way, though, talk to the comments about your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye. <laughs>